the exercise in your textbook. I am sure you will answer the questions first by yourself and then compare your answers with my answers when I discuss them. We will move on to the first type of question. Underline the correct answer. Out of the cells and tissues given below, which type is of dead cells? Normally, the cells have, that is the plant tissues, have cells with cellulose cell wall. Then the cells are living. And when there is lignin deposit, the cells become dead or the cells are dead. Let's look at the answers. Fibers. This is a sclerenchyma tissue and you know there is lignin deposit. Parenchyma. They have cellulose cell wall. They are living cells. Colenchyma. Although they have the cellulose thickening at the corners of the cell wall, they are still living cells. And the seed tube element. In order to provide space for the translocation of food, the cytoplasm, the organelles and the nucleus are not present in the cell, but still it is a living cell. So out of the four, fibers is the dead cell. Which of the following is a complex tissue? How do we classify tissues as simple? and complex. If there are only one type of cells, then we call it simple permanent tissue. And if there are two or more types of cells, then we call them as complex permanent tissues. So parenchyma is a simple permanent tissue. Xylem is a complex permanent tissue. And sclerenchyma and colenchyma both are simple permanent tissues. Features mentioned below could be observed in a plant tissue under a microscope. Identify the tissue. They have given some features. Isodiametric, that means the cells are spherical in shape. They have a large vacuole and also they are living cells. Immediately when you read the features, you know the answer. These are parenchyma cells. Sclerenchyma, colenchyma, xylem and parenchyma. So these three features belong to the cells of parenchyma tissue. A characteristic of skeletal muscle fiber is, you all know the three types of muscles. So here we need to identify the characteristic of skeletal muscle fibers. They are spindle shaped. No, the smooth muscles are spindle shaped. They have cross striations. Yes, uninucleate. No, the skeletal muscles are multinucleate. They have more than one nucleus in their muscle fibers. Never becomes fatty. These are the muscles that can easily become fatty. So we need to select the characteristic of a skeletal muscle fiber. So the second one is the correct answer. Presence of cross striations. I will move on to the next question. When a student observes an animal tissue under the microscope, he observed the cells present on a basement membrane. You know this is a special feature of the epithelial tissue. All the cells are tightly packed and they are all arranged on a basement membrane. The tissue is epithelial tissue. Possesses connective tissue muscle tissue, nervous tissue. So the answer is epithelial tissue. Which is correct about cardiac muscle fibers? Again, a type of muscle 
them they want us to identify the correct feature about cardiac muscle fibers non striated cardiac muscles are also striated possesses intercalated disc this is present only in cardiac muscle fibers multinucleate no the cardiac muscle has only one nucleus in each of the cell long cylindrical cells they are cylindrical cells but they are branched and short cells so that is why the fourth answer is not correct we will move on to the next question state two differences between meristematic and permanent tissues remember students they can directly ask for differences then you can write either the structural difference or functional difference but if they ask you specifically then you have to stick to that particular difference here since they have asked for two differences i will write one structural difference and one functional difference we divide the tissues as meristematic and permanent based on the ability to divide so the cells that divide actively by mitosis are known as meristematic tissue whereas permanent tissues do not divide and are made up of differentiated cells so i will write that as the first difference meristematic tissue tissue contains cells that divide actively but cells of permanent tissues have lost the ability to divide then we will look at a structural difference because they divide meristematic tissues are small cells with no intercellular spaces and they are not differentiated whereas the permanent tissues contain cells which are differentiated and have specific shape and features so we can say meristematic tissues tissues contain cells that are not differentiated but the cells of permanent tissues are differentiated you can also talk about the absence of a large central vacuole in the meristematic tissue 
and the presence of large central vacuole in permanent tissues as well as there are a large number of mitochondria present in the meristematic tissue whereas there are normal number of mitochondria present in the permanent tissues and also you all know sclerenchyma tissues have dead cells because of the lignin deposit. We will move on to the next question. Name the tissue types given below. So students if you are given diagrams you should look at the diagrams carefully and try to identify the features specific to different types of tissues. So here if you look at the first diagram you can see that the cell walls are evenly thicker. There are very broad distinct cell walls and they are evenly thicker. And also you can see in between these white areas there is no presence of any type of organelle. You can't see a nucleus in it. So that means that has to be a lumen. Evenly thickened cell wall and the presence of lumen means it has to be a sclerenchyma tissue. So tissue A has to be sclerenchyma. Then we look at the second diagram. Here you can see these are the cells and in certain cells you can identify the presence of nucleus. So that means they are living cells and also at this part you can see that there is a deposit. The corners of the cell wall are thick. They are thickened with cellulose and you know the tissue. This is cholenchyma tissue. So B has to be cholenchyma. And when we move on to the next one, C, you can see the shape of the cell. They are isodiametric or spherical in shape. You can see the nucleus and also you can see intercellular spaces. You know the tissue, it is parenchyma. I'm sure you got all these correct. Parenchyma tissue. So this is how we identify the different types of tissue. And I'm sure you can do it well. We'll move on to the next question. State two structural differences between a cardiac muscle fiber and a skeletal muscle fiber. Structural differences. So students, I told you all, they can either ask commonly as differences or specifically as structural or functional difference. So you make sure that you write only that particular difference. So here structural difference between cardiac muscle fiber and skeletal muscle fiber. They are both made up of cylindrical muscle fibers. The cardiac muscle fiber is branch whereas the skeletal muscle fiber is unbranched. Both of them have striation so that's not a difference and you can see in a cardiac muscle fiber inside a cell there is only one nucleus. So it is uninucleate. Whereas the skeletal muscle fiber contains more than one nucleus. It is multinucleate. And also the cardiac muscle fibers are short cylindrical structures. Whereas the skeletal muscle fibers are long cylindrical fibers. So there are three main structural differences. You can write any two. So I will write the first difference as or I will put it in a 
table form. I'll say cardiac muscle fiber. That would be easy for you to understand. And the skeletal muscle. So cardiac muscle fibers are branched and the skeletal muscle fibers are unbranched. Cardiac muscles are uninucleate. Whereas the skeletal muscle fibers are multinucleate. And we discussed the third difference. These are short fibers, whereas the skeletal muscle fibers are long. I will move on to the next question. Name the animal tissues given below in diagram. Animal tissues, these three belong to three different groups. You can easily identify them as you look at the pictures. What is tissue A? You can easily see there is a basement membrane and one layer of cells arranged on that. So this is a epithelial tissue. Tissue A is epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue. Then B. What is B? When you look at the cell, you can identify the cell body and the nerve fibers, axon and the dendrons. So this has to be a neuron which belongs to the nervous tissue. So since they have asked us to identify the tissue, we will write the answer as nervous tissue. Nervous tissue. Then we have the third type of tissue. You can see these are thin cylindrical fibers and they are branched and also they have the intercalated disc and the nucleus in between. So you can easily identify it as cardiac muscle tissue. So here we can specifically write it as cardiac muscle tissue. Okay, students, that is the last question in your textbook. We will move on to some extra questions. Extra question one. Select the correct answer. So each time before I discuss the questions, you can answer them by yourself first and then look at the discussion. Correct statement regarding meristematic tissues. Large number of mitochondria are not present. That is wrong. There are a large number of mitochondria. Why? Because the cells divide all the time and they need lot of energy. The number of cells are increased by meiosis. You all know the two types of cell division. In meiosis, the number of chromosomes become half. So that cannot take place in meristematic tissue where there is growth. The number of cells are increased by mitosis. That is correct. From a diploid cell, you will get a diploid cell. The number of chromosomes are maintained. Large central vacuole is present. That is also incorrect. Because the cells divide all the time, they don't have a large central vacuole, but there can be small vacuoles present. 
So the correct answer is the third one. The number of cells are increased by mitosis. Not a feature of cholenchyma tissue. Contains living cells. That's correct. The corners of the cell walls are thickened with cellulose. That is a special feature of cholenchyma. Cells are elongated and polygonal in cross section. That is also correct. Cells possess a cytoplasm and a central vacuole but no nucleus. That is incorrect. Cholenchyma cells have a nucleus. So that is the incorrect statement. Not a feature of cholenchyma tissue. So cells possess a cytoplasm and central vacuole but no nucleus. So that is not a feature of cholenchyma tissue. I will move on to the next question. False statement regarding epithelial tissues. The cells are placed on a basement membrane. That is a characteristic of epithelial tissue. Nutrition is provided by the blood vessels present within them. That you can remember students. Epithelial tissue has nervous supply but does not have blood supply. So this is not possible. There is no intercellular space between cells because they are tightly packed. That is also correct. This lines up the free surfaces of the vertebrate body. That is also correct. So false statement regarding epithelial tissue is the second one. Next question. Blood is a special connective tissue. That is something you know. Statement that is not true regarding blood. Matrix is secreted by the blood cells. That is incorrect. Matrix is not secreted by the blood cells. Plasma is the matrix of blood. That is correct. Red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets are present in the matrix. That is also correct. Fibers appear in the matrix during the process of blood clotting. That is also correct. So the statement that is not true regarding blood is the first one. Matrix is secreted by the blood cells. Now the Next question, not a feature of meristematic tissue. Cells are dead. You all know meristematic tissues divide continuously. The cells undergo cell division. So they have to be living cells. So this is not a feature. We will check the other answers. A large central vacuole is absent. That is also correct. Either there is no vacuole or there will be very small vacuole. No chloroplast. That is also correct. Lot of mitochondria are present because there is energy needed for the cell division. There are a lot of mitochondria present. So since we have to find the feature, not a feature of meristematic tissue, the first one is the Correct answer. Cells are dead. Next question. An example of complex permanent tissue is parenchyma, cholenchyma, phloem and sclerenchyma tissue. You all know students there are three types of simple permanent tissues. Parenchyma, cholenchyma and sclerenchyma. So the phloem tissue is the only complex permanent tissue. So the answer is phloem tissue. I will move on to the next question. A feature of sclerenchyma tissue. 
you all know what sclerenchyma tissues are. There is a nucleus and a central vacuole. You all know that the cell walls of sclerenchyma has ligni. Because of that, the cells are dead. So then there can't be a nucleus or a central vacuole. The cells are dead. That is correct. The cell wall is thickened by cellulose. No, there is lignin deposit. And the last answer, mitochondria are present. That is also incorrect because the cells are dead. So a feature of sclerenchyma tissue is the cells are dead. The next one, a special feature of xylem tissue is Presence of sieve tube elements that is seen in phloem. Presence of companion cell that is also in phloem. Presence of sieve plate again in phloem. So the first three features are seen in phloem tissue. Presence of vessel elements that is correct. The vessel elements combine and form the xylem vessel tube. Next question, tissues specialized to transmit nerve impulse. You all know in animals there are four types of tissues and the tissue that is specialized to transmit nerve impulse is the nerve tissue. Epithelial tissue is to line up the free surfaces, internal and external surfaces. Blood tissue does the connecting function. Skeletal muscle tissue is involved in locomotion and movement. So the last answer, nerve tissue is the correct answer. Next one, correct statement about skeletal muscle tissue. You all know the three types of muscle tissues and skeletal muscle tissue is one of them. Spindle shaped. Only the smooth muscles are spindle shaped. Cylindrical shaped. That is correct. These are thin, long, cylindrical shaped fibers. Branched. Incorrect. Because the skeletal muscle is not branched or it is unbranched. Involuntary. That is also incorrect because all the movements are voluntary. So the correct answer will be cylindrical shaped. We will move on to the next question. Extra question 2. So here as you can see the question students you have to write the answers. So what you can do is you can write the answer first and then listen to the discussion. What is a tissue? I am sure you have written the correct answer. A group of cells that have a common origin that are adapted to perform a specific function is known as a tissue. So we will have to write that down here. A group of cells with a common origin adapted to perform a specific function is known as a tissue. So students, when you all write the answer here, you have to remember the two main points. You have to say common origin and are adapted to perform a specific function. The next one, 
write the two main types of plant tissues. You all know how we group the plant tissues based on their ability to divide. The ones that can divide are known as meristematic tissues and the tissues that are differentiated and that do not divide are permanent tissues. So the answer here is going to be meristematic tissues tissues and permanent tissues. The two main types. We will move on to the next question. Extra question 3. What are meristematic tissues? You all should know to write the definition or the explanation for meristematic tissues. A type of tissue where the cells can actively divide by mitosis to produce new cells are known as meristematic tissues. So we will write that here. Tissues with cells that divide actively by mitosis to produce new cells are meristematic tissues. Then the next one, what type of cell division takes place in meristems? We have already written the answer, mitosis. Mitosis. There are three types of meristematic tissues in plants. What are they? This depends on the location of meristem in a plant. So we have the three types. Apical meristem. Next one is lateral meristem. And the third type is intercalary meristem. Apical meristem, lateral meristem and intercalary meristem. With that, I will move on to the next question. Extra question. In what plants do you find lateral meristems? You all know lateral meristems are responsible for the secondary growth or the increase in diameter of the plant. So that is observed in plants that can undergo secondary growth. Those are the dicot plants. So here we can give the answer as plants that undergo secondary growth or dicot plants. I can write the answer as plants that undergo secondary growth Or you can say dicot plants. Then the next one. In which part of the dicot plant do you find the lateral meristem? 
you get it in the vascular bundles that are present in the stem. So here we have to write the answer as vascular bundle of the stems. So that is where we get the meristematic tissue. What is the name given to the above part? In a vascular bundle, if you can remember students, there is the xylem and the phloem. Usually the phloem is towards the outside, xylem is towards the inside of the stem and in between the two you get the meristematic tissue that is called the cambium tissue. So here we have to write the name cambium. Can be. We'll move on to the next question. Extra question 5. So here they have given you a picture. I'm sure you can remember this picture. This is part of a stem when you observe under the light microscope. A cross section of a stem under the light microscope. Name parts A, B and C shown in the picture. So we just discussed this part. This is a vascular bundle and you all know A is the phloem. So here part A will be the phloem. Then part B is the meristematic tissue. This part that is the cambium. And part C here will be the xylem. Next question. Extra question 6. Write the two main types of permanent tissues. How do we classify permanent tissues? Based on the number of types of cells. If there is only one type of cell, we call it the simple permanent tissue. If there are more than two types of cells, then we call it the complex permanent tissue. So the two types are simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue. Those are the two types of permanent tissues. What is the function of apical meristem? You all know students, meristems are classified based on their location. So apical meristem is present in the shoot apex and the root apex of the plant and they help to increase the height of the plant. So here what is the function of apical meristem? Increase the height of the plant. That is the function of apical meristem. So the next one will be extra question 7. In what part of the plant do you find intercalary meristems? You all can remember this. We get intercalary meristem in the plants of grass family. You all know the nodes. And in between the nodes, we have the internodes. So the intercalary meristems are present at the nodes. And they help to increase the length of the internode. So in what part of the plant do you find intercalary meristems? You have to say at the nodes. 
at the nodes. What is the function of lateral meristematic tissue? You know the function of lateral meristems. They help to increase the diameter of dicot stems. So the function will be increase the diameter of the dicot stem. What is this process called? The secondary growth or formation of wood. So we can say during the formation of wood. wood. So that is the function of lateral meristematic tissue. Next question, extra question 8. Write the tissues that transport water and food in plants. We all know these are the vascular tissues. And the tissue that transports water is the xylem. So here we can just write it as water xylem. And food is transported by the phloem. And what is the special name given? We say the phloem translocates food. Write the types of cells present in xylem. You all know this is a complex permanent tissue. Why? Because there are four different types of cells. So if we write the names xylem, vessel, element. Then we have the tracheids. The xylem fibers. And the last one, xylem parenchyma. Xylem vessel element, tracheids, xylem fibers and xylem parenchyma are the four types of cells present in xylem. Next one, extra question 9. What is the main feature of simple permanent tissue? So here they are asking the main feature of simple permanent tissues. Permanent tissues, the cells have lost the ability to divide and they are differentiated. But in simple permanent tissues, they are made up of only one type of cells. So we have to write that as the answer. What is the main feature of simple permanent tissue? They are, or we can say they contain only one type of cells. That is the main feature of simple permanent tissue. What is the main feature of complex permanent tissue? That is the opposite of this. They have more than two types of cells in them. So here we can say they contain more than two types of cells. 
there are two complex permanent tissues. What are they? You know the answer. You would have got it correctly. Xylem and phloem. These two are the complex permanent tissues. The next question, extra question 10. What is the function of complex permanent tissue? What is the function of complex permanent tissue? These are the xylem and the phloem. They transport substances. So if they commonly ask function of complex permanent tissue, we can say transport of water, minerals and food. Or you can say transport of substances. So I will write the answer as transport of water, minerals and food. Or you can say transport of substances. You don't have to write both answers. You can write one of these answers. Next one. What are the functions of xylem and phloem? These are the complex permanent tissues and we said they transport water, minerals and food. So xylem transports water and minerals. Here I will write the function of xylem. Transport of or transports water and minerals and the phloem translocates food. Phloem translocates food. Next question. Write the three types of Simple permanent tissues. I am sure you know them very well. The parenchyma tissue. Colonchyma. And sclerenchyma. Parenchyma, colonchyma and sclerenchyma are the three types of simple permanent tissues. The next question, extra question 11. In what form is food translocated through flowing? You all know this process. We have already discussed this in the first unit of grade 10. Glucose which is a Monosaccharide is produced during photosynthesis. It temporarily stores in the leaf as starch which is a polysaccharide. Then again it is converted to sucrose, a disaccharide and that is translocated through the fluid. And again it stores as starch in different parts of the plant. So here the question is in what form is food translocated through phloem. So we can simply write as sucrose and if you want you can complete the answer and be more specific. Sucrose through the phloem it is called the phloem sap. So here you can say sucrose in phloem sap. Next one, what are the cells present in phloem? I am sure you know the four different types of cells present in phloem. The sieve tube element. 
सीव ट्यूब एलिमन कंपेनियन सेल फ्लोएम फाइबर एंड फ्लोएम पैरन काइमा so these are the four different types of cells here you have to remember students the fiber and the parenchyma you have to write it as phloem fiber and phloem parenchyma we will move on to the next question extra question 12 how does the sieve tube form you all know these students the sieve tube elements stack one on top of the other and then the cross walls dissolve in completely so that the sieve plate is formed and then the sieve tube becomes a continuous tube like structure so that is what you have to write here sieve tube elements stack one on top of the other the cross walls dissolve in completely and form the sieve plate the sieve tube becomes continuous so that is how a sieve tube is formed with the cross walls becoming the sieve plate we will move on to the next question extra question 30 write a few locations of the human body where epithelial tissues are present i am sure you can remember students the epithelial tissue lines up the free surfaces of organs what we have around our body is an epithelial tissue the epidermis of the skin so that is one location skin within brackets we can give it as epidermis or you can write it as epidermis of the skin then if we take the nose the nasal cavity is lined by epithelial tissue so the second location we can say nasal cavity then we have the glands which are lined with epithelial tissue for example we can take the thyroid gland that is present in the neck region the thyroid gland thyroid gland they have asked for a few locations we can write another location if you can remember the bladder bladder where the urine fills that is also lined with epithelial tissue 
and also the capillaries. The wall of capillaries are lined with epithelial tissue. So here I can write another location wall of capillary. So since they have asked for few locations, you can give at least three locations. I have written four different locations. What is a connective tissue? From the name itself, you can remember the tissue that connects the different parts of a human body. Or you can say the tissue that connects the different organs of a body. So here I can write it as the tissue that connects the different parts or organs of the body. That is how you can explain connective tissue. We will move on to the next question. Extra question 40. What are the cells found in blood tissue? I'm sure you can remember students, blood consists of a matrix that is called the plasma and in the plasma there are different types of cells and tissues. That is a special feature of connective tissue and blood is a connective tissue. What are the cells present in blood? The red blood cells and the white blood cells. So here we have to write it as R, B, C or you can write it as red blood cells and W, B, C white blood cells. Do we include platelets here? No, because platelets are fragments. They are cellular fragments, not cells. So you have to only write RBC and WBC. What is the function of blood tissue? I am sure you know the answer. Blood tissue transports minerals, hormones, gases, throughout the and nutrients throughout the body of a person or the animal. So here we can write the function of blood as transport of nutrients, digested food, gases, then we have hormones throughout the body. So you can include a few substances that are transported by blood. The main function is transport of substance. So here students we have written the function of blood tissue. You all know there are two other functions. The white blood cells in blood help to control pathogens or they involve in immune activity. The white blood cells 
do phagocytosis and destroy the microbes that enter into our body. And also blood involves in homeostasis. So there you can write those two functions as well. The immune activity or protection against pathogens and homeostasis. If you look at the question, what is the function of blood tissue? So the main function has been written here. We need to write the other two functions. The next one will be protection against pathogens and also homeostasis. So those are the functions of blood. We will move on to the next question. Extra question 50. So here they have given diagrams. Once you look at the diagrams, you can identify them as the three different types of muscle tissues present in animals. Identify the tissues A, B and C. Since all are muscle tissues, you have to identify them specifically. Here you can identify this as the smooth muscle tissue. How? Due to the spindle shaped cells with one nucleus in the center. So A is going to be smooth muscle. And B, you can see these are cylindrical fibers and there are cross striations that is common to two tissues. But here there is no branching and also you can see there are more than one nuclei. That means B is skeletal muscle. So here I can write B as skeletal muscle. Then the third type obviously has to be cardiac muscle. How do you identify that? The fibers are branched and you can see the intercalated disc and also there is only one nucleus per cell. So those are features of cardiac muscle tissue fibers. So C is cardiac muscle. The next one, what is the function of muscle tissue? You all know these are three different muscles. They are involved in movement. Smooth muscles are present in the digestive system where they help for the movement of the digestive system for the digestive process. Skeletal muscles are attached to the skeletal system or the skeleton of the body and they involve in movement and locomotion. And cardiac muscles are exclusively found in the heart and that is needed for the beating of the heart. So here all these muscles help in movement. So if they ask what is the function of muscle tissue? So you know students there are different types of muscle tissues. When we eat the smooth muscles present in the digestive system help in digestion. The Skeletal muscles help in movement of different parts of the body. And here the cardiac muscle helps in the beating of the heart. So overall we can say they involve in movement of different 
parts. But if you look at these movements, when there is a stimulus, we respond to the stimulus. For example, we touch a hot object, we draw our hand away. So to do that, the skeletal muscles are required. And when we are excited or scared, our heart rate might go up. So there are also, there is a response to the stimuli. So we can say that the muscles act as effectors in response to a stimuli in a coordination process. And these are one of the effectors. You will be learning about the second type of effectors. Those are the endocrine glands. So here, if I answer this question, what is the function of muscle tissues? We can say they act as one of the effectors in coordination. Okay. With that, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 16. Write two parts of the human body where smooth muscle is present. You all know smooth muscle is present in different parts of the human body. The walls of the digestive tract has smooth muscles. Wall of blood vessels has smooth muscles. Then the uterus has smooth muscles. And also the urinary bladder has smooth muscles. You can write any two answers here. I will write the answers as wall of blood vessels and also I will write the answer as uterus. You can also write the answer as wall of digestive tract or the urinary bladder. We will move on to the next question. Extra question 17. What are skeletal muscles. I am sure you know the answer. Skeletal muscles are made up of skeletal muscle fibers and they are associated with the skeletal system. So they can involve in locomotion and movement. So that is what we have to write here. Muscles made of skeletal muscle fibers and are associated with the skeletal system. You don't have to write the function. Function is to involve in the locomotion and movement. Next question. Write examples of skeletal muscles. You all know where you can find skeletal muscles. The bicep muscle and the tricep muscle present in the hands and also the leg muscles and facial muscles are all skeletal muscles. So here I will write all the examples bicep muscle tricep muscle. Then we have the leg muscles 
and uh, facial muscles. So these are examples of skeletal muscles. We will move on to the next question. Extra question 80. What is the importance of cardiac muscles? I am sure you know the answer correctly. Cardiac muscles are exclusively found in the heart of vertebrates and they are needed for the beating of the heart or the function of the heart the, to pump the blood. So here when they ask you what is the importance of cardiac muscles, we can say they help in the function of the heart to pump blood. So or we can say they are important for the function of the heart that is pumping of blood. Next question. Write the features of cardiac muscles. You all know the features of cardiac muscles. They are made up of fibers. Fibers are cylindrical, branch and short. So here that is one feature. Fibers are short, cylindrical and branched. Then they have intercalated disc. intercalated discs are present. How many nucleus are there? Only one. So they are uninucleate. Uninucleate. These are the structural features. There is one more. What is that? They have cross striations. So here I can include that as well. Cross striations are present. What are functional features of cardiac muscles? They are involuntarily controlled and they never become fatty. So here since they have not asked what type of features, I will write all the features. So those two involuntarily controlled never become fatty. So remember students, here I have written all the features. The first few are structural features and the last two are functional features. If they ask you a common question, you can write all these. Or if they specifically say write two features, you can write any two of these features. But if you are asked specifically, then you should know to write the correct answer. I will move on to the next question. Extra question 19. What is the function of nervous tissue. You all know the answer. 
they transmit nerve impulse. So here we can write the answer as transmission of nerve impulse. Next one, what is the basic structural unit of nerve tissue? You all know the answer. It is called the nerve cell or neuron. So here I will write both answers. Nerve cell or neuron. You can write one of the answers. Neuron would be better. Write the types of nerve cell. You all know there are three types of nerve cells. They have different structures. They slightly differ in their structure and they are different in their functions. What are the three types? The sensory neuron, interneuron, and the motor neuron. So these are the three types of neurons. We'll move on to the next question. Extra question 20. What is the substance present around the axon of nerves in cordial? It is myelin sheath. So here we can write the answer as myelin sheath. Or since they have asked substance, you can also write it as myelin. What is the name given to the places where the substance you mentioned above is interrupted? You all know the myelin sheath is not continuous and the spaces are called node of Ranvier. So here you have to write the answer as nodes of Ranvier. What is the advantage of the substance you mentioned in part 1 above? Myelin sheath is there to protect the axon. But the advantage is because of these nodes, the speed of transmission of impulse increases. So here the advantage is increases the speed of Transmission of nerve impulse. That is the advantage. So students, you have to be careful when answering these types of questions. The presence of myelin sheath is for protection but the advantage of myelin sheath is the increase in speed of transmission of nerve impulse. I will move on to the next question. Extra question 21. Structure of a nerve cell neuron is given to you. Answer the questions based on the diagram. So here you can see this diagram and once you look at the diagram, you should be able to identify what type of neuron this is. I'll read the questions first. Name the parts A to G given in the diagram. So you have to label the parts. What type of neuron is given above? Identify the type. Write the types of neurons and their functions. I will answer the questions one by one. 
So, structure of a nerve cell neuron is given to you. Answer the questions based on the diagram. Name the parts A to G given in the diagram. So, here you can see the different parts. A, what is A? It is the cell body. So, here I will write the answer as cell body. Then we have B. These are the dendrites. So, B are the dendrites. Then we have C. That is this part. That is the nucleus. The nucleus of the nerve cell. Then we have D. Here you can see D actually points to these spaces, the discontinuous myelin sheath. And E is the one that points to the inner part that is the axon and F points to the myelin sheath. So here D will be node of Ranvier. Then we have E, the axon, and F is the myelin sheath, and G points to this part that is the synapsis vesicles. So here I can write it as synapsis vesicles. So here I have identified all the parts of this neuron. So you all can also identify the type of neuron from the picture. We will move on to the next question. What type of neuron is given above? From the picture, I am sure you would have identified the type of neuron. It is a motor neuron. How do you identify it? There is a long axon and there is myelin sheath and the node of Ranvier's. So here it is motor neuron. Next one. Write the types of neurons and their functions. You all know the three types of neurons. We will start off with the first type, sensory neuron. What does the sensory neuron do? It transmits impulse from the sensory organ to the central nervous system. So here you have to say transmit impulses from the sensory organ to the central nervous system. Then we have the motor neuron. Motor neuron. What does this do? It transmits impulses from the central nervous system to the affected. So, transmits impulse from the central nervous system to the 
perfect. And the third type is the interneuron. What does the interneuron do? It connects the sensory neuron with the motor neuron. Connects the sensory neuron with motor neuron. So we have written the three types of neurons and their functions. So with that I have come to the end of extra questions. I am sure students you have understood the different types of plants and animal tissues. And now you have got an idea about answering questions related to this lesson. As I always say, that is not enough. You have to study the lesson again and again. You can watch the discussion also again and again. And remember all the important points and then practice as many questions as possible so that you will be very competent to face the exam.